Hello. Thank you for inviting me to share our work at the Bioinformatics Open Source Conference during ISMB. I am Monica Munoz Torres, and together with Jules and Peter, we represent a great community of people who work together on the development of the GA4GH phenopacket schema. I hope to encourage you to explore and use this new resource for your work. First, let me introduce you to the Global Alliance for Genomics and Health, or GA4GH. This is an organization that hopes to accelerate progress in these fields by developing standards and framing policy for responsible genomic and health-related data sharing. Jules, Peter, Melissa Handel, one of our BOSC keynotes this year, and myself belong to the Monarch Initiative, which is a driver project of J4GH. Melissa and the Monarch Initiative led the work stream on clinical and phenotypic data capture for the past four years. Monarch works in a unique position at J4GH, using our expertise in translational and integrative sciences at the intersection of basic biology, cancer, complex traits, and rare diseases research. Okay, but now on to our subject of phenotypic representation. Phenotypic features or phenotypes, such as symptoms in laboratory and imaging findings, results of physiological tests and other things, are of high clinical importance, yet exchanging them along with genomic variation information is often overlooked or even neglected. And we need to be able to use computable representations of these phenotypes at the case level, so we have computable means to relate to form, function and dysfunction in order to interpret the genome for diagnostics or otherwise. There have been standard exchange formats for genome sequences in existence for a very long time, but not for phenotypes, at least not in a way that allows us to constrain the data to a model that is research ready. And we desperately needed a mechanism to share case level phenotypic information, improving on the use of just text or downloading the entire EHR in PDF format. To fill this gap, we created the Phenopacket standard. It is an exchange format for phenotypes and environmental factors, a packet of phenotype data to be used anywhere and written by anyone. These packets are encoded using ontologies and can be used to relate a patient's phenotypic profile to model organisms, helping to improve diagnostics, mechanism discovery, and the integration with environmental health data. Video packets allow us to exchange information about the patient, including identifiers, age of collection, as well as details about each of the observed phenotypes, including whether or not a phenotype was observed, when they were first observed, how they were observed, how severe the phenotype is, and how each phenotype is linked to a patient, to their genomic information, to the samples that were collected, and when available, to the patient's parents and siblings. In the latest version of the standard, we are including improvements for the representation of cancer and COVID-19 phenotypes. This achievement was a community effort from the beginning. A community of researchers and clinicians established the requirements and specifications of the schema, and it went through rigorous peer review and product approval processes. The first version was released in 2019, and the second one improved the first version based on the feedback we received from the community, expanding the data model to better represent temporality, medical actions, and measurements. The Phenopacket schema provides sufficient shareable information of the data outside the electronic health record, enabling the capture of structured data at the point of care by a clinician or clinical geneticist to be shared with other labs or for computational analysis in clinical or research environments. And it also provides a complete computational object model of the data, as opposed to a relational table schema, so JSON objects instead of TSV files. The schema supports the exchange of computable longitudinal case-level phenotypic information, and it supports the diagnosis and research on all types of disease, including Mendelian and complex genetic diseases, cancers, and infectious diseases. The schema is formally defined using Google's Protocol Buffers version 3, or Protobuf 3. You can learn more on the website I pasted here about Protobufs. I'll tell you that it is language neutral and allows faster deserialization than many other schema languages like XML or JSON. When I say this, I mean that 
because it goes on the wire as a binary representation, the format allows for a little bit of a faster transfer. And it is simpler to use due to automatic validation of data objects. Protobuf schemas can be compiled into many different language implementations, JavaScript, Python, allowing efficient object transfers between services without developers needing to write their own implementation. In the figure below, we have a phenobacket protobuf message comparison. So on the left, we have the definition of ontology class, which is a data type in the, in the phenobacket schema represented here in protobuf. And in the middle, a representation of an instance of that ontology class representing the HPO term for neutropenia, which is a very low count of a kind of white blood cells uh, here in YAML format and here in JSON format. The schema consists of several optional elements, each containing information about a certain topic, like a phenotype, a variant, or a pedigree. And the element can contain other elements, which allows a hierarchical representation of the data. So for instance, the phenopacket element contains elements of type individual, phenotypic feature, biosample, and so on. Individual elements can be regarded then as building blocks that are combined to create larger structures. The cohort describes a group of individuals that are related in some phenotypic or genotypic aspect. And a family here describes a group being investigated for a disease, such as a trio or a parent and a child. And all these colors you see represent the major themes of the elements within the schema. In this brown yellow, we see the medical actions. These are some examples of the most important phenopacket elements. And in the, in the next few minutes, I'm going to describe a selection of these and we'll illustrate each of them with examples. For the complete schema and detailed documentation for each of these elements, please visit this documentation online on the Read the Docs link I pasted here. And uh, just a reminder, here's that short URL to these slides. Uh, so you can make your way to those slides and jump off to the documentation. First, I'll discuss the individual element. The individual contains information about describing uh, the patient with an identifier, date of birth, the age, which is measured as a time range, sex of the patient, and their vital status, whether they're alive or not, and if deceased, the reason for their death. So this represents a 86-year-old man who passed away from metastatic malignant neoplasm. We also have the phenotypic features in a phenopacket. These are typically characteristics which are more descriptive than quantifiable, such as uh, the loss of sense of smell, anosmia, fever, or the difficulty to breathe. A phenopacket can contain information about an arbitrary number of phenotypic features that are observed in a single individual, each one encoded using the phenotypic feature element. So for medical uses, the subject will generally be a patient or the probant of a study, and the phenotypes will be abnormalities described that, described by an ontology such as the Human Phenotype Ontology, or HPO. Each phenotypic feature is defined by an HPO term. An example is shown here with the letter A, which is, in this case, infantile spasms, which is qualified as either being present or absent. Another phenotypic feature is here being qualified as not being present, excluded. We also include information about its severity, modifiers, onset, resolution, and evidence codes, uh, which is information that can be provided to represent the evidence for an assertion, but not included here in the example. So this example on the right shows a phenotypic feature that can be understood as severe, daily, infantile spasms, which first occurred in infancy and then resolved at age four years and two months in a child without global developmental delay. Next step, the measurement element. Measurements can be quantitative and qualitative. Yes, no, colors. And they have description of a patient or biosample, and uh, they also have temporality, a timestamp, a time range, an ontology term. The example here shows a measurement of platelet count. Here on the left, we see a graphical representation of an abnormal laboratory value here that is way outside of the reference range. And the panel in the middle shows the relevant phenopacket hierarchy, description, assay, measurement value, the time, the procedure. On the right, the panel shows a measurement representing an abnormally low value for thrombocyte count. So we have that value, which is 24,000 
uh, cells per microliter in a range that should be about 150 to 450,000. The reference rate represents the range that was applied in the specific investigation. So this actually may reflect things like age or sex specific values for some analytes, not for this one. This is the representation of a medical action in a FINA packet. This element uh, covers pharmaceutical treatments, surgical procedures, uh, radiation therapy, and therapeutic regimens. On the left, we see the components of the medical action in the FINA packet, packet, and on the right, an example using COVID-19 medical actions. The, implement, the implantation of a left ventricular assist device in 2016 here gives us past medical information that it's important as it represents a risk factor for severe COVID-19 infection. And then the intravenous administration of dexamethasone and the provision of oxygen by nasal cannula over here at an initial dose of two liters per minute that was later increased to 50 liters per minute. In general, a medical action consists of one of four options, procedure, treatment, therapeutic regimen, and radiation therapy. And the a packet can include a, an arbitrary number of medical actions. We are collaborating with other teams to get FINA packets integrated with other clinical data standards. The OMOP FINA packet exporter is a Springbok uh, Spring Boot app, which runs a web server on top of an, of an OMOP database to export data in FINA packet format for an individual. And it was developed as part of the Biohackathon Europe last year, uh, remains an ongoing community effort. The HL7 organization is working on interoperability for electronic health records, and FINA packets is one of the HL7 Vulcan Accelerator projects, which are projects selected to foster growth in the application of research standards that rely on clinical data that has been curated by the health process. The goal is to build an implementation guide to represent the phenotypic information captured in a FINA packet in the electronic health record using FHIR. This implementation guide is nearly finished. And by the way, there will be an HL7 hackathon in September in the context of the Vulcan Accelerator project, which will give participants an opportunity to poke around and test the current version of the implementation guide. Uh, there's also a manuscript underway. FINA packets is an approved standard of GA4GH, and it is currently going through the last step of review for approval and as an ISO standard. Details about our reference implementation and documentation materials can be found on these links listed here. Some organizations, such as biobanks and journals, are already using FINA packets. For instance, the FINA packet standard is currently implemented at the Japan AMED Biobank Network, where 600,000 patient FINA packets have been generated. The European Genome Phenome Archive, the Biosamples Database, the Solvar D Consortium, Genome Canada, and the European Joint Program on Rare Diseases are either in the process of or have already implemented FINA packets. FINA packets will benefit research biologists, physicians, and patients alike. They can support diverse users and use cases in the context of the biomedical ecosystem. There are multiple providers of phenotypic data, including patients and clinicians via a variety of mechanisms, including mobile health gadgets and the electronic health record. And the FINA packet schema acts as a common model that can capture data from all these different sources with a unified software representation and in turn can be used by multiple receivers of the phenotypic information, including journals, databases, registries, and clinical laboratories. Their implementation can improve the speed and accuracy of diagnosis as well as treatment. Effectiveness can facilitate cohort identification and patient matchmaking during clinical trials and will generally improve the data landscape and facilitate the creation of tools and algorithms as they find their way into databases and web-based tools. Even today, many healthcare systems rely on the manual entry of phenotypic data. The offer of a standardized format then brings hope to reaching a state in which we're able to not only integrate the individual's genomic and phenotypic data, but also enable the, the easy electronic exchange of this information. The phenopacket will hopefully ultimately improve our ability to understand, diagnose, and treat diseases.
Thank you very much for your attention. I would like to acknowledge the work of so many in the community listed here who have made this work possible, as well as our funding agencies. Jules is the main developer of FINA Packets, and Melissa and Peter and Chris are our project's uh, principal investigators. Thank you so much for your attention.